vivare est cogitare. Life is thought. An expert is a person who has made all the mistakes that can be made in a very narrow field. The opposite of a correct statement is a false statement, but the opposite of a profound truth may well be another profound truth. Prediction is very difficult, especially about the future. Those who are not shocked when they first come across quantum theory cannot possibly have understood it. Everything we call real is made of things that cannot be regarded as real. How wonderful that we have met with a paradox. Now we have some hope of making progress. No. No, you're not thinking. You're just being logical. There are some things so serious that you have to laugh at them. Never express yourself more clearly than you're able to think. A physicist is just an atom's way of looking at itself. We are all agreed that your theory is crazy. The question which divides us is whether it is crazy enough to have a chance of being correct. My own feeling is that it is not crazy enough. Einstein, stop telling God what to do with his dice. The meaning of life consists in the fact that it makes no sense to say that life has no meaning. Every great and deep difficulty bears in itself its own solution. It forces us to change our thinking in order to find it. There are trivial truths and there are great truths. The opposite of a trivial truth is plainly a false one. The opposite of a great truth is also a great truth. Every sentence I utter must be understood not as an affirmation, but as a question. We must be clear that when it comes to atoms, language can be used only as in poetry. The poet, too, is not nearly so concerned with describing facts as with creating images and establishing mental connections.
The very nature of quantum theory forces us to regard the space-time coordination and the claim of causality, the union of which characterizes the classical theories as complementary but exclusive features of the description symbolizing the idealization of observation and description respectively. Physics is not about how the world is. It is about what we can say about the world. I myself find the division of the world into an objective and a subjective side much too arbitrary. The fact that religions through the ages have spoken in images, parables, and paradoxes means simply that there are no other ways of grasping the reality to which they refer. But that does not mean that it is not a genuine reality. And splitting this reality into an objective and a subjective side won't get us very far. It is not enough to be wrong. One must also be polite. We are suspended in language. It is the hallmark of any deep truth that its negation is also a deep truth. The Stone Age didn't end because the world ran out of stones. You must come to Copenhagen to work with us. We like people who can actually perform thought experiments. In our description of nature, the purpose is not to disclose the real essence of the phenomena, but to track down, as far as possible, relations between the manifold aspects of our experience. The best weapon of a dictatorship is secrecy. But the best weapon of a democracy should be the weapon of openness. Perhaps I have found out a little about the structure of atoms. In quantum mechanics, an observation here and now changes, in general, the state of the observed system. I consider the unpredictable change of the stare by a single observation to be an abandonment of the idea of the isolation of the observer from the course of physical events outside himself. If you can fathom quantum mechanics without getting dizzy, you don't get it. Using the word, much as it is used in atomic physics, to characterize 
the relationship between experience obtained by different experimental arrangements and visualized only by mutually exclusive ideas. We may truly say that different human cultures are complementary to each other. Conventions by means of which latent potentialities of human life unfold themselves in a way which reveals to us new aspects of its unlimited richness and variety. The very fact that knowledge itself is the basis for civilization points directly to openness as the way to overcome the present crisis. It is wrong to think that the task of physics is to find out how nature is. Physics concerns what we say about nature. I feel personally responsible for the universe's inevitable heat death. For a parallel to the lesson of atomic theory regarding the limited applicability of such customary idealizations. We must, in fact, turn to quite other branches of science, such as psychology, or even to that kind of epistemological problem with which already thinkers like Buddha and Lao Tzu have been confronted when trying to harmonize our position as spectators and actors in the great drama of existence. Physics is to be regarded not so much as the study of something a priori given but rather as the development of methods of ordering and surveying human experience. In this respect, our task must be to account for such experience in a manner independent of individual subjective judgment. And therefore, objective in the sense that it can be unambiguously communicated in ordinary human language. Vivare est cogitare. Life is thought.